the themes are two reasons why HEB is so different from any other grocery that you've ever met. We care. We care about your story. We care about who you are. We care about why your product is so special to you. So when you begin to think about what you want to submit, what product that you want to submit, go do your research in your stores. Do you see anything like it? What makes you special? So what I wanted to talk about today, first, let me introduce myself. You know, I'm supposed to, let me do this the right way. Um, my name is Crystal Royal. I'm the Supplier Diversity Manager for HEB. Uh, a little background on me, I'm from Houston, Texas. Uh, originally moved to San Antonio. It'll be six years in April. I actually started in the construction side of the business, but I've owned my own business, Royal Consulting Group, for 10 years. And my particular business was working with small minority businesses in Houston and helping them set up their business for success. So when I came to San Antonio for the construction side, immediately uh, the diversity team asked me to start working with them from Supplier Diversity to help them build their program. And the young lady who was there went on to be with a nonprofit with that supports HEB. And they asked me to step in this space. And you know how they say things happen for a reason. Um, I always knew I love construction, but this is a, par a part of me that I'm really passionate about because I love small minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, uh, LGBTQ, sustainability, all of those, as we say, the swim bees, I won't go through all of the alphabets, um, but all of those individual businesses make up what I call a community. And when you have a strong community, you have a strong economy. And that's why Texas is one of the strongest economies that people don't realize because of the entrepreneurs that are here in Texas. So I always ask this question, what is it that HEB partners, because we call us partners, HEB communities and our HEB suppliers all have in common? Yeah, let's see, I'm gonna go with Chef Larkin. What do you think? I think that what they have in common is that they're supporters of all anything Texas. Um, they love to bring in uh, anything that is local, um, anything, again, just anything Texas. That's what I, I feel like. That's what HEB Partners is about. So all three of those have in common, and that's a good answer. But all three have in common, which I'm sure all of you do, is we all shop at HEB. <laughs> <laughs> we all of us, partners, <laughs> our communities, even our suppliers, we all shop at HEB, right? So yeah. one of the reasons why I bring that point up is because it creates an ecosystem. In that ecosystem, you got HEB. If you go to any communities, you see one, two, maybe three HEBs, right? In those HEBs are all these small businesses within HEB. But what happens with those small businesses is we give them POs, they start selling in HEB, it increases their wages, they give, they can hire more uh, employees, they can produce more goods and services, they get tax breaks. And then a lot of our suppliers mirror us and giving back to the community. And what I understand with this platform is all about sustainability, which is great. So when you talk about all these little tentacles you see, it creates this wonderful ecosystem. And that's why I said we believe that small businesses create a strong economy in, H in, in Texas because it does. As you can see, when we went, the most beautiful thing out of the most detrimental thing was when we went and began, COVID began, Texas was one of the least affected economy wise because of small businesses, because the supply chain was already in Texas. That makes sense? So we didn't have to go and outsource to other people. We had them right there in our communities. We didn't need to go find other people. They were right in our supply chain. So instead of going outside of Texas, it's Texans for Texas. So Chef Larkin, Chef Larkin you are correct. Absolutely correct. <laughs> that is the ecosystem that is created. Texans for Texans by Texans, right? So I, you saw behind me, we talked about this. These are supplier opportunities that we bring to the public 
that allows suppliers to tell us about them and we tell them about HEB. One of the ones that's the most important, there's two on here that I say every supplier should find out about, which is the Quest for Texas Best Contest and our, our Supplier Diversity Opportunity Exchange. Amy, you were a part of that. You knew what that was about. And with both of those are opportunities for suppliers to showcase their particular products to our sourcing and our um, buying managers. Quest for Texas Best, if you've never heard of it, is a contest and this is in our ninth year. Let me give you a little statistics on Quest for Texas Best. We have given out over 30 what we call the Millionaire Club belt buckles. These are suppliers that have come through Quest for Texas Best. That's 30 plus million dollars in sales that they get these buckles for. The, and, and that be insane that you think about when I talked about the economy, the $30 million. And that was last year's numbers. We're not even talking about this year's numbers. Uh, so again, Quest for Texas Best is one you need to look out for. And I, I'm going to give a lot more in depth on that one. Supplier, I, I, at that one, I won't give away the goods yet. I'll, 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 I'm going to stop on that one. On the Opportunity Exchange, we do it every September. What we've done this year and the last two years because of COVID, what we learned is we've moved it to virtually. But you don't want, I know everyone's like, well, what happened to the expo? Well, what we've done is we've asked those suppliers who want to be a part of the expo to submit a two minute video about who they are. And then we send those videos directly to sourcing and buying managers. So again, it keeps you away. You don't have to spend so much time away from your business now. What you can do is focus on your business and also focus on how do I get the attention of a sourcing leader or a, a, B, a BDM. So Blyversity Table Talks we're working on where we're going to start doing what we call quarterly meetings, similar to Opportunity Exchange but in a, on a, in a smaller setting, a more intimate setting that will focus specifically on areas of the business. So say for instance, you have a frozen food, then we'll bring in frozen foods and we'll bring in those BDMs and, and sourcing managers to have a table talk about how to do business with us. Say for instance, you have a beauty product, we'll bring the, the beauty BDMs in. So it will be specific to you and now, your network is a part of our mailing list. So you'll be on every last one of those email blasts that go out. So you won't miss anything. Our signature events, and that's what we just talked about. Um, th that's one of the supplier table talks that we have. And if you see in the, at the bottom on your left, my left, is uh, my leader, James Harris. He is the director of supplier diversity, diversity and inclusion. But the three others that you see are suppliers within HEB and they came through Quest for Texas Best and they're part of our Millionaires Club. And they come on and that's another thing we do is we bring suppliers that are in that particular space to talk about how they got in that space and how they're maintaining in that, place, that space. One of the things I've done my best to do with suppliers is two things and make sure you take this note. HEB should never be your number one supplier, ever. It should only be no more than 30% of your business because if something should happen, you have a recall or you have an, an, a hiccup with supply chain, that could take your business all the way down. So make sure when you're applying for any of these that you have other sources of other incomes. You're not making HEB your number one. Now we want to be your number one. We want to put you in all our stores, but we want to make sure that that sustainability of you as a business is viable for yourself. So we stair step you. You may start off when you come into HEB and a lot of people are like, I want to do a hundred stores. Well, have you done a business plan it scaled up your business to show what that would look like. So if a BDM approaches you or, or a sourcing manager approaches you and you say, I want to do 100 stores and here's my business plan. I guarantee you that sourcing leader or that, that BDM is going to say, okay, they're prepared. One of the things you want to be prepared for is when you get in front of these managers, 
you've done your due diligence. You have a business plan. You have a five-year business plan. You have a scalable business plan. You have a future of what you'd like to see happen with HEB. And one of the things I always ask everyone, if you have multiple products, pick your top three. Don't give it all. Pick your top three. And that's going to speak to Quest for Texas best when we get to that part. Those that are in the construction world, we have what is called a construction outreach. And our construction outreaches are for minority, small minority-owned businesses to do work with our GCs as subcontractors. We go look for them with our primes. We just had one for Austin 8 where we had over an attendance 113 uh, subcontractors from all trades. So whether it's tile, art, if you go into a store, you notice none of our stores look alike. They all have something special about them from that community. That's what our construction outreaches are about. They're not just, yeah, epoxy, drywall, it's the same standards. But we also look for those artisan type of people who can go in and do that kind of artwork or that kind of mill work. So then keep that in mind too. And again, opportunity exchange. And again, this is one of our out construction outreaches. Many people think we're just stores. No, <laughs> we're not. We have manufacturing plants. That's something for you to think about as a person that's a supplier of a small business. Is it something, how do you manufacture? Would it be us that could manufacture it for you? Do you would you be willing to do the ingredients? Think about those things when you're beginning to approach HEB because we do have our own manufacturing plants. We do have our own, um, uh, it's called MWT. We, all, we have our own warehousing. So do your research on HEB. So that way when people come and approach you or when you are approached about your product, the one thing that I love is to listen to a supplier who's done their research because nine times out of 10, they're going to be on our shelves. They know who we are. They know how to be in our stores and they want to work to scale their business up to the next level. This was uh, some of the numbers from last year, but one of the things I wanted to point out from last year is we had over 1,200 product submissions from 238 cities. It's a lot of people. We scaled it down last year to 20, but this year we're scaling it down to 10. That's why I said your best of your best of your best products. As you see, it's a very diverse amount of people who won last year, but don't, most people think just because they won, the others that made the finals didn't. Nine times out of 10, those people that made it to the finals are on our shelves. One of them is the jank Lamar Jones, he didn't win Quest for Texas Best. Guess what? He's one of our millionaires. Another one is Dip It, uh, Pilar Gonzalez. She didn't win Quest for Texas Best. She's one of our millionaires. So you don't have to win Quest for Texas Best. You just have to have a winning product that we want in our stores. So back to Quest for Texas Best. Here's what I think everybody was thinking and wanting to know. Open submissions start February 20. Third, it's very important that you look at those times because because of the fact that it's a contest, we have to stay within those limits. So February 23rd at 12.01 a.m. is when it will open up and I'll give everyone the link. And at 4.59, I'm not going to put the 59 on there. At 4.59, that link closes. Not 5 o'clock, not 5.01, not 5 01.2 <laughs> at 459 it closes out and there's no opening it up our top prize is twenty five thousand dollars our third place prize so you have a grand winner you have a first place second place and third place the top prize is twenty five thousand dollars the third prize is ten thousand dollars and it'll end on april 27th you know april 7th these are some of the people that I've been talking about. And I think you may have seen some of these products at something what we've been doing called Be The Change. And if you haven't been aware of them in your stores, look for some of this signage. These are some of those people that are a part of Quest that have been a part of Quest and didn't win. And guess what? They're on our shelves. 
and they're part of the HEB support. They receive HEB support from us from a marketing standpoint, from an advertising standpoint. We're all over Facebook with them. They're doing in-store sampling. They're invited to grand openings. They're part of our social media platform and they're part of our press releases. So again, becoming a supplier with HEB, you get the support that you need. But one of the things that we emphasize is to make sure you're ready for that. One of the things I'm seeing with a lot of small suppliers is they get in and it's like a deer in headlights. <laughs> it just, <laughs> and I'm like, and that's my job to kind of bring them down <laughs> and direct them to, to resources. So I want y'all to write down a few resources real quick that can help you. One is your local SBDC, small business Development Center. You have one at UTSA. It's a nonprofit and it's free. They provide business resources to small businesses. They get paid by the SBA to do that. And they provide uh, business plans. I send a lot of suppliers that come in with that deer nail lights. I send a lot of them to SBD, the SBDCs because it helps them begin to scale their, their products. It puts them in touch with other manufacturer or co-packers if you need it. There's also, I don't know how many of you are certified minority businesses. You need to be certified. There's an agency called SCTRCA. I'm going to say that again. S-C-T-R-C-A. South Texas Regional Certification Center. You, being a part of San Antonio, receive it for free. Another resource that's for free. You can certify your business as a woman-owned business, as an African-American business, as a disabled business, as an LBGTQ business. That also puts you in a network for South Central Te Texas of others that people actually go and research and look for certain suppliers. So make sure you're certified. That's another beautiful thing that's free for you. Deadlines. I, I'm going to actually share this, uh, this deck. Uh, I'll send it to you guys. So that way you can remember. I know you're taking a lot of notes, but I know it's easier to, to see it. So I'm going to share this with you. So the launch is February 23rd. Submissions are from February, 30, February 23rd through April 7th. And then we begin the reviewing of the entries. So it goes dark after that point. No one's, you're not gonna hear from anyone. Don't think that you didn't make it. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's darkness at that point. And from April 8th to May 31st, that's when we begin the review. Then we'll begin the notify finalists around in June. And then the finals will take place in Dallas, Texas and Fair Park. So I hope to see some of y'all there. I really wanna see some of y'all there. This is how you submit, www.heb.com slash quest. I would, I'm also going to send a link and I'll send it in the morning for you to register for the community um, outreach meetings that we're going to do. We're going to do one on the 23rd and we're going to do another one on March 24th. It'll give you all the rules, all the regulations and everything that you need to know. Before you submit, I would say go to that meeting because it's going to give you all of the information that you need because one thing you don't want to do is start that application and then you have to stop it because it doesn't auto save. You'll have to start all over again. So before you do that, I will send the links that it can be shared to how you'll register for it. It's on event. Actually, you can search it on Eventbrite and look under Quest for Texas Best. It'll pop up. Um, and you should be able to see it, but I'm going to also, like I said, I'll send this deck over as well as uh, all the links that we just talked about. So this is a little bit of what we've done, and, and I, I think uh, it was uh, Urban Soul was here with this one, <laughs> where we partnered with a number of uh, community partners. We're very, okay, I'm going to say this. Since I've been in this role, we've become very active in the community. So we're part of other networks. The um, Maestro Entrepreneur Center, we're also a supporter of because they always receive a, a number of grants from um, the, the state and the city 
for entrepreneurs. And it's this particular celebration was them receiving a grant from um, the city of San Antonio. Um, and it was a pitch uh, program where they needed to look at their business and pitch. One of the reasons why I had the picture that is to your far left that says grain for grain, I brought them up for a reason. They're already a supplier of San Antonio. Everyone seems to think when you become a supplier in HEB that you're rich. That's not the case. You end up spending a lot more money because you've had to scale up your business. So this is Johnny Grain for Grain, and he's one of our suppliers, and he won one of the grants. And I didn't even know that he applied. Keep, I emphasize this to every small business that I know. Keep your game going. Do not stop. I don't care who you receive one of the biggest POs that you've ever received. You've got to keep your grind going. You're always looking to take your business to the next level. And that doesn't mean multiple products. How well are you doing? Because he's stuck with this one. Gray for Gain has been mastering his product for probably the last four years. It is just recently that he is now launching a new product. So master what you have especially if it's something that's a big seller and begin to look at others, but make sure you're not leaving the one that's got you where you are behind. These are some of our strategic partnerships. You may have seen them before. That's South Central Texas Regional Certification that I talked about at the top. There's SBDCs all across Texas, the Maestro Center, TMAC. All of these people we work with you all become a part of that network. So again, you're, this network is a part of us now. So you'll receive all the emails that when I'm invited to these different organizations, when I'm invited to these different opportunities, because they all speak the same language. All of them want to work with small minority owned businesses. If you're not affiliated with some of these chambers, if you're not affiliated with some of these councils, start doing research on being affiliated with them, especially if you're trying to get take your business to the next level. There's someone out here who's already done what you, you're trying to do. And I, I've heard it, I've seen it. They're willing to help, especially these particular organizations. What's going on, folks? My name is Lamar Jones, and I'm the creator of the Jank Gourmet Barbecue Sauce. The Jank was a 2015 HEB Quest for Texas Best Finals. And to say that it's changed my life, be an understatement. HEB is once again on a quest to find the best in Texas, the best local products made by Texans. And I'm here to help you make your submission shine. This year, with your HEB Quest for Texas Best application, you'll need to submit a two minute video. Now, I know you hear two-minute video and you get all nervous, but don't be. Your video should tell H-E-B about your product. It should show them your product and why you think it's the best in Texas. Don't forget those small details. Here are some things that H-E-B is looking to learn about your product. Think about how your product is made, where your product is made, and why H-E-B should select your product as the best in Texas and any other small detail you think they might need to know. You can do anything, but keep it creative. Tell the story of your product, but more importantly, talk about why your customers love it and why you're so passionate about it. Best of luck as you take your next step in your business journey. You got this. Lamar is one of my favorites because he actually produced that on his own. So everyone thinks we did it for him. We didn't. Um, there's one more I want to show you. As a woman, you can overcome anything. Can y'all see that? There is no limit to what you can achieve. You just need to believe in yourself. My name is Farisi Bai, and I'm the founder of Afia Foods. I'm originally from Syria, and I grew up in the UK. When the war broke out in Syria, my mother-in-law had hours to pack her life in a bag. So she packed her most sentimental items and personal belongings. One of those items was this black recipe book. And it's filled with recipes handed down from generation to generation. 
The one place she found comfort was in our kitchen, where she'd take out this book and she'd cook us the most amazing, authentic meals that brought the family together. It was that comfort that she felt back from home in our kitchen and here in the States. I thought to myself, I have these amazing recipes. I have a chance to prove to myself, my daughters, and to women out there that no matter what comes your way, you're stronger than you think, and you can start from the ground up. HEB is a dream partner. They believed in Avi when there was nothing like it on the shelf. Seeing our products in HEB's freezers for the first time was just mind-blowing. Just having them believe in us changed my life. I feel like I've achieved my dreams. If people were to hear my story and see what I've done, I would hope that that is an empowerment to other women and entrepreneurs out there. Say, hey, you know what? If Farah can do it, I can do it. I wanted to show you those two videos for a reason. The themes are two reasons why HEB is so different from any other grocery that you've ever met. We care. We care about your story. We care about who you are. We care about why your product is so special to you. I met that young lady and I still get teary eyed because um, she's right. They came here with nothing, absolutely nothing but a dream. And she believed in her product, but she only picked one. If you notice, it was only, remember I talked about it, it was only one product. She had a number of products she could have picked in that book. But what she did is she walked into stores and looked at the research and said, I don't see my product. I don't see a product like this on the shelf. So when you begin to think about what you want to submit, what product that you want to submit, go do your research in your stores. Do you see anything like it? What makes you special? And when you do your two minute video, tell why. That story she told, we actually put it to a video because it was a story she told us at Quest for Texas Best. It was not a dry eye in the room. <laughs> I mean, the entire, uh, the whole room was bawling because we, but her food is amazing. But we were bawling because her story, like, that's what makes us special as a company is that, you know, yeah, you, you, if you look at national retailers, they don't know who their suppliers are, but we do. Like I started naming different ones that I, I saw at different events. I remember those names. I remember those things. And, and I always tell people just because you don't get in right then doesn't mean that you're not. I can tell you a number of people who who actually applied for Quest for Texas Best and done it three or four or five times before they got it right. Doesn't mean that there's something wrong with your product. Does not mean that at all. We can only pick now 10. But that doesn't mean that you're not going to get on the shelf. But be very, very intentional when you do submit about why you're submitting. If it's just you want to be on the shelf and make some money, then HEB ain't for you. You may want to go to Walmart because they're not going to care about you. But if you really want to come to a company that wants to care about a small business, that wants to see you see in Excel, Brenda Powell's another one. She took um, Savannah Sweet Tea. She took leftovers. And I remember these stories because I sit in the audience during Quest when we do the finals. So I get to listen to the stories because you got to do your pitch again. And she had, she was a caterer. So she always had fruit punch, tea, and lemonade left over. She always have all this left over. So she started combining it. And that's how she came up with Savannah Sweet Tea. Now, how many of us always have them three things left over when we, don't, we have a Christmas dinner or a Thanksgiving dinner? She turned it into a product. So at, what I want to leave all of you with is that 
to be an entrepreneur in this space, a lot of people think it's just about money. But if you don't find the passion behind your own product, you can't help. You cannot expect us to have that passion for you. You got to have it for yourself. You got to invest it in yourself. You got to invest it in your company. And it's got to come across that way. It's got to come across to us that you care that much about your product that we want it in our stores. That makes sense? So I'm going to be quiet and I'm going to open it up for questions because I can talk about this all day. Y'all already know it. You can see how passionate I am about it. And especially women. I'm, I'm, I'm huge on, on women entrepreneurs. I've been, like I said, I've been in this space for 10 years. I started watching a lot of these people and I could show videos for days on the ones that we, we spotlight. But it's, it's, as I get to talk to them a lot more, it's the, th the same thing over and over and over of our winners. It's not so much the product because we can help you get that together. George and Ruby's, they came in with a crock pot, y'all. They had a crock pot for Quest for Texas Best. And they came in and pitched their now gumbo and filet. Is it called filet? It's a... Um, a Mexican style dish. They had it in a crock pot. They're on our shelves now. Nice. So I say that to say, just don't think so much about it's got to be perfect. What we look for is passion. I love that. I love that. You've given us a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm like, it's kind of giving me a lot of more ideas for workshops and stuff that we need to, to get going um, for some of our business as well. But anybody have questions? I'm sure you guys have questions. I know you have questions. <laughs> Please, fire them away. Fire them away. I do have a question. Um, well, first of all, I, I, I'll introduce myself because I missed the introductions when y'all were networking and stuff earlier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I, uh, I am Chef Latoya Larkin. I am the proud owner of Black Girl Tamales. So I do, I, I do creative fusion soul food tamales. So I put a spin on it. There are a lot of people that make tamales, but nobody's doing what I do. I got a collard green, smoked turkey, crawfish and some face, some other pork chop, oxtail, some other chicken. Um, Gumbo, red beans and rice, nacho, vegetarian. Um, tamales? Tamales. These, I'm still talking about tamales. <laughs> I'm still tamales. talking about tamales. I'm still okay. talking about tamales. So, uh, and again, and I, I was listening, when you was mentioning about the caterer, that's actually how I came up with my collard green tamale. Um, because I did, uh, I grew up making tamales with my grandmother. Um, she lived down in California for a little while. She had a Hispanic friend that taught her how to make tamales. When she came back to Texas, she brought it back to Jasper, Texas, where she sold hot tamales. And that was a little side hustle because this was back in the 60s. So she was a housekeeper as, you know, the help from the movie to help. So she was a housekeeper. So she sold tamales on the side. Well, uh, my grandmother helped my mother out a lot with us. And so I learned how to make tamales with her, you know, so she pulled me on like eight years old, rolling tamales with her. And just to carry on that legacy, I've always made regular tamales, right? And so, and when I go pick, get stuff, everybody will always look at me when I'm checking out and it's like, and I just tell them like, yeah, I make tamales. I'm a black girl and I make tamales because I know that's what y'all thinking, right? And so, and it just stuck. And so I was like, okay, black girl tamales. And then uh, it was a brunch that I did for Mother's Day and I had some collard greens left over. And I used to teach. I used to be a high school uh, teacher. I taught culinary, ran a culinary program. And so in the summertime, I would sell tamales while we were out in the summer, you know, and do events and stuff like that. And I was telling my son, because he's my right hand man, been there along the way. And so I say, uh, son, I was like, I'm going to take the, uh, the rest of that collard greens and make some tamales. And he was like, mama, you tripping. And I was like, no, no, no. Think about it. I was like, it's like cornbread and collard greens. And he was like, man, mama, look, we need to just stick with what we doing. We, we got a good thing going with our chicken and our pork tamales. Like, you, you trying to do collard green tamales? Like, and I was like, seriously, I was like, think about it, cornbread and collard greens. And so he was like, man, all right, whatever, you, you gonna do what you do. So I rolled them out and it came out to be like just a dozen, like right at a dozen. Rolled them out, steamed them. And so I called him in, I was like, hey, come try one. And he ate it and like, he has been cooking with me since he's three. And that fake, that look right there, he lit up. And he was like, mom, like, hey, let me get another one. I was like, but I thought I was tripping though. 
And he was like, all right, okay, mom, you got a point. All right, you got a point. So I let a couple of my clients uh, taste and it was like, shit, you, like, you, you, you got to put this on the menu. You got to put this on the menu. So that's why I came up with Black Girl Tamales because we all know cornbread, collard greens, that's soul food, that's comfort food. And so when the pandemic hit, that's when it really got took to another level with the other flavors because, you know, we went on spring break. We never went back to school. And so um, I was laying in bed and I was, re- I was literally looking up in the ceiling. And I was thinking, I was like, man, what other flavors could I do? Because I'm a personal chef as well. So what I do is clean my freeze on and I just post food like meal prep and stuff. Because, you know, restaurants done closed down. Yeah. So, you know, yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's what I was looking for to blow up. But the tamales took a whole different spin. And so I was laying in bed and I made some oxtails one week. And I was like, let me, I pulled them off the bone. And I was like, you know what? Oxtail, anything that goes with cornbread, oxtails, smother chicken, smother pork chop, red beans and rice. What's your top three? Uh, collard green is the number one. My collard green, uh, I've had to scale back on oxtails because oxtails done went up so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was right. It was right there. The, the, the oxtails was neck and neck. But I'm working with a food manufacturer up in Dallas. And so the uh, top ones that I picked is the uh, collard green and smoked turkey, jerk chicken, and the um, smothered pork chop. And the smothered pork chop, that's, that's, that's the next one. For those that do consume pork, is the smothered pork chop. So um, and I've done the research, and like I said, I can proudly say there is nobody doing what I'm doing. Because again, the same look you had—that's the same reaction I get from everybody when I start naming. They're like, "Wait a minute, you talking about tomorrow? I'm still talking about tomorrow. I'm still talking about that." And I know it's hard to believe, but uh, one of the questions I had—you uh, had mentioned about the uh, SCTRCA. Did I write that down right? SCT SCTRCA. Okay. So yeah, you you got it right. Okay, I'm in Houston. Now you mentioned that's in uh, San Antonio. Would I be able to still? Uh, okay, perfect. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, for so there's a network of these regional agencies throughout Texas. So as long as you're in these networks and you, and Houston is one, it's okay. free. Okay, perfect. Awesome. Okay. Um, oh, and you uh, you mentioned also about a manufacturer. Y'all have your own manufacturing facility. We have our own manufacturing facilities. Um, The one thing about that that I always explain to small suppliers is before you decide that you want us to manufacture it for you, Mm -hmm. make sure that's the avenue you want to go. The reason why I say that is because you think of own brand, you see our own brand products. Right. Most of our own brand products come from small suppliers who don't want to do that work, but they're ready to give up that 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 recipe and then take the take the royalties from it. Y'all can slap your name on it all day long. I don't I don't want to deal with it. Y'all manufacture it. Here's the recipe. However, you're still actively a part of the process. It's still yours. It's just now you don't have to deal with all of the, the extras. So uh, because I know a lot of suppliers are like, no, that's mine. Mm-mm, don't You can't touch my recipe. That's my stuff. So make sure that's a step that you want to take. You're already working with a manufacturer. I would say continue with that. But what I do want to see is you and Quest for Texas Best. Absolutely. I, I would I bet I'll see a video. I bet to see a video. And Absolutely. I'm talking to you too, Urban. So I bet to see a video. <laughs> <laughs> Look here, I'm I'm about to go trying to manufacture my own stuff though. I'm I think I'm gonna go ahead and let y'all handle all of that because I think that's what we we decided. But yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Carol, I know you have, let, uh, I'm going to have Carol ask a question and we'll go through questions, but I still want to go through because we didn't really do all of the introductions. I wanted to want to know because I, I'm, I'm very active in Quest, so I, I'll be looking for people. <laughs> I'm going to be looking for people. Uh, why I didn't see your video? Uh, why, why I didn't see your video? So Carol, go right ahead. Did you freeze? Uh-oh. There you are. Yes. I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you were gonna ask a question, and then we we started talking to Chef. Oh, me? You you're talking yeah. to me? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. What I'm interested in—that's really what I'm interested in—is manufacturing. And you actually you answer my question because that's basically what I do. I do everything homemade, and I make everything organic. Mm-hmm. And that's what I do. I do the keto, vegan, gluten free, sugar free, paleo, and I make regular desserts. But I also do comfort foods too, but I haven't gotten off into that field yet. 
I just want to basically stay with uh, with the desserts because so everything I, I make, even my crust, everything I make is homemade. Even so, my crust, all the way down to the crust. I take it always back, and that's why I say I always take it back to Quest. What's your top three? Is uh, baking. Is baking. Well, what's, your, what's your top three sellers? Um, the lemon pound cake, lemon pound cake cookies. Um, and I also make the strawberry uh, shortcake cookies. So you just told me something and I'm, I'm bringing, I'm, I always give it back. You just told me that I can actually, cause I'm gluten-free. I have a friend that's gluten-free that I can eat lemon bar cookies and that I can eat lemon pound cake, they lemon gluten -free. pound cake cookies. Gluten that, free. I, I, that I have not been able to eat in forever. And then also there was another one you just said, what was the last one? Because I stopped at Lemon Pie. <laughs> <laughs> so that, those are two I've no, never gluten -free. seen gluten free. No, 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 no. Now uh, the gluten free is the lemon pound cake. Okay. The lemon pound cake cookie. But the uh, strawberry shortcake, that's a regular cookie with my butter. So again, I'm going. I keep going back to Quest because all these items I'm hearing are specialty items. That, if you notice, is what Quest is about. We're looking for the best of the best that we don't see anywhere else. I have not seen a lemon pound cake gluten-free cookie. I'm upset that I did not know that and you that's had. One of my, that's one cake. of my top. That's one of my top sales because I also make lemon pound cake regular cookies. I'm interested in and I, do over <laughs> and I do over 47 different types of cookies. But remember what I talked about. But the thing is, is that I don't, Crystal, I don't make all the fancy icing and everything because everything is so homemade and it's so organic. And if you can taste it, once you taste it, you'll know. And every place I go at the market, I sell out. So with I'm saying to you, when you apply for Quest for Texas Best, that's why I said what I said at the beginning of it, you pick your top. Because if they call you in to pitch, that same energy you just told me, that you just came to me with, with that lemon pound cake, because also they taste. So there's tasters and there's, there, there's going to be judges and they're tasting if you make it to the finals. That's why I say your best of your best that's been tried and true that sells out that people can rave about in your videos. You need to have people doing testimonies about your product because this is what's going to draw the attention of the sourcing managers and the BDMs. People already know about you. you they see people tasting your food. They want to, first thing they're going to want to do is I want to taste it. I want to know. So you want that phone call from that, that sourcing leader. You want that phone call from that, that BDM to say, I need to set up a meeting to meet you. You get that phone call, there's your first in and the dough. That's where you take off. As a matter of fact, Ms. Crystal, uh, I'm, 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 I'm inviting you to check out my website. You will see uh, the gluten-free uh, lemon pound cookie. And that is the cookielady54.com. Well, I can remember that. That's my age. Cookie well, I was like, I was like, <laughs> drop it in, drop it in the chat too. Matter, Kara. matter of fact, do me a, a favor, Charmin, if you will, email me the list of these individual businesses yes. if you can, because I want to know everybody. I'm gonna be looking for everybody. <laughs> in, 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 in quiz, and Crystal, so. yes, Crystal, yes. Naomi is on the line. Sis has the best vegan lasagna that I've ever had. Yeah, I mean, she's like, it is the best. most amazing lasagna, stuff. Period. Period. Okay. But mm -hmm. you need to mm -hmm. try. Because I know you eat vegan food. So you need to try. Vegan and gluten free. So y'all all speaking my languages here. And, <laughs> and with you and the collard greens and, and, the, and the, the tamale. Uh, yeah. We, 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 we don't have to talk. I've already had scratch forms and I've been looking for you because I ran out of my stuff. So I did, and I lost my car and I moved. So when you popped up, I was like, <gasps> she's in there. <laughs> and I haven't seen you. Um, let's do a real quick introduction before we finish the questions because I want to hear from everyone and about their business. Because Amy, I'm pretty sure you probably expanded since I met you. So Let's, I've heard from Carol, I've heard from Chef Larkin. Let's go to you, Amy. Can you hear me? I'm not on mute. Nope, you're off. <laughs> okay. So Supplier Diversity was 2019. 
Love that program. Love that day. The Bath and Body Beauty Lady buyer was not there. Nope. They weren't present. So I didn't make the right connection that day. And then 2020, I applied for Quest for the Best. I went through the whole application process. And that was the year that it was canceled. 2020, yep. Yeah. So I lost that opportunity. And then I don't know how I missed all of last year. I don't know where 2021 went. I missed the contest. I missed the supplier diversity program. I, I don't know where I've been. So I was so happy that this, this was offered tonight so I could bring it back full circle and try this again. <laughs> I'm happy to see you. I really am happy to see you. Uh, it's, it's always a great thing to, to, to walk into a room even virtually, and know some of the people that are on the call. And, and like, I, I, I remember coming to your table and raving about it. <laughs> I remember I, my little goodie bag with me. And um, yeah, I, 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 I need you to apply again. And I need you, now that I'm in this seat, because when you met me in 2019, I wasn't in this seat. I was still on the construction side, uh, but I was just helping, I was helping Tessa. Now I'm in this seat, so I need you to, to come into Quest again. I really need you to come into Quest again. Uh, what, how Have you expanded your products in any way? Are they still the same ones? What have you been doing? It's been three years, so I've probably gone from a line of 16 products, and now I'm up to 26. So it's a full line, but I definitely have my core bestsellers. Good. Good, 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 good. Okay, so thank you, Amy. Marilyn? Let me hear about this lasagna. <laughs> I don't know if she's still on here. Is Naomi I she's on mute? She, she's trying to unmute herself. Na Naomi did get off, but... Um, oh, Naomi did, yeah. so hold on. It was Marilyn, uh, so now we're up to Marilyn. Marilyn, she's trying to get off of coming back. She's coming back. She's trying to take herself off mute, but it's not working. Oh no! <laughs> Let me see if I can do. You should be able to take her off mute. I have to ask ask permission for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've asked to unmute you. <laughs> can I please unmute you? <laughs> Let's see. Oh, I got them all. Let me do this. Okay. Word, Oops. She's coming back. She's coming back. Here we go. I'm putting y'all's information that was in the chat in my contacts now. There she is. Okay. Hey, I'm so sorry. It's okay. Hi. Hello. So I'm Myra Macklin. Um, so I have a home decor line called Vision Decor. And my brand is solely dedicated to females. So I have women body candles, body vases, um, body wine glasses, uh, body plant like booty plant pots, titty plant pots. <laughs> um, <laughs> they're um, awesome so, too <laughs> yeah so anything that has to do with home decor I have it in the shape of a woman so oh, yeah. this is what people find odd Quest for Texas Best is not about just food anymore we have mm -hmm. included general merchandising so um, you are invited <laughs> to okay. Quest for Texas Best <laughs> no we had one guy that um, we've had a lot we've had books one of two books actually made it to the finals. Um, mm. Then we've had another one who had a grenade. It looked like a grenade, but it was a charcoal starter. And he made it to the finals. But he's also on our shelves. He didn't win, but he's on our shelves now. So I would say to you, yes, please submit. Whatever your top sellers are, submit. Yes, ma'am. Yay. Right, well, I, thank I, I thank you for being here. And again, I, I'm looking for y'all. I'm, I'm looking. <laughs> I'll be looking here. <laughs> April, I'll be the one looking. I'll be sending them out. Hey, did y'all see? I'm sending them a list. I'm, I'm not being biased. I just need to know. Yeah. <laughs> so I thank you. Uh, 
Naomi's back, so she can tell you about that lasagna. Please, Naomi, tell me about this lasagna. Yes, I was over here raving about it. And it was like she died. She just went away. Where'd she go? Let me guess, Naomi is a foodie. She's a straight up foodie. She likes to eat, don't she? Yes, 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 yes. You guys, I heard about this lasagna, this vegan lasagna. I need to hear about this. Away from my kids, y'all. They came in and I was like, okay, so now I'm in my bedroom, locked my kids out so I can actually talk to y'all for a second. <laughs> Um, well, we talked about earlier. I was like, get the kids settled. <laughs> that's exactly what it was. When you saw them coming in, they were just coming in. From, so, but then I was like, she's recording. I'm going to come back and listen and, and when I get back. So I'm glad I made it back before y'all were done. Hi. <laughs> Hi. I, I, we were talking about Quest. I was talking to everyone about their top products and they were telling me about something that I've not seen on our shelves except for like large companies which is a vegan lasagna yeah um it's funny you say that because the, the only vegan lasagna that I've seen on the market that's frozen is I think there's Amy's Amy's that's it because I'm vegan filter. it is it I have a vegan one <laughs> it's, vegan. it's vegan and gluten-free no, but I said, yeah, but it's like a single serve, like you said. Um, so I was doing hot food pop-ups prior to the pandemic. My lasagna was a really big seller and I'm going to the grocery store. I've got a three-year-old and a five-year-old here and I'm just looking for things that I can quickly heat up and serve the kids because I'm busy and I'm standing in front of the groceries. I'm standing in front of the frozen section, just like, this is horrible. Like there has to be better options. I know that if I was willing to pay more for a higher quality, mm -hmm. um, very good tasting vegan product, I would have been blowing my money and you know, I would have been like, I need it. I need it. Cause it makes me feel good feeding my kids and stuff. So I was like, wait a minute, I guess I'll step into this, this area since there's clearly a big hole in this market right here. So that's kind of how that came about. Well, I, um, you're right. This market is blowing up. As mm -hmm. we talked about, here on gluten-free, keto, uh, keto, paleo, uh, vegan, vegetarian, flexitarian, all the terians. But that market is blowing up, and the issue is is that it's blown up bigger, faster than most companies have been able to keep up with. But the problem is, is you're losing the taste. You're losing that 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 feel good that comes with it. So, Naomi, I don't know how busy you are, but I need you to to, to bring that lasagna to Quest. I really do. I need you to submit for Quest because we need a, a a true like a, you know that little single serving. I'm I like to eat, y'all. Even though I'm, I'm vegan and I'm gluten, I like to eat. So. I, 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 and that little single serving and it's not gluten free and I've not been able to master. I'm not a cooker. I, I don't, I, I cook, but I, 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 I know my weaknesses. Yeah. And lasagna is, is not one I do well with. I've attempted to do a number of vegan types and gluten free types of dishes just to say they didn't, didn't come out right. Especially mm. my, the cookie part. I just gave up on cookies. I, and they don't, they, they come out hard as rock and I want to throw them against the wall. So I'm looking for those. Did anybody, did anybody tell her about the vegan family reunion yet? No, we have not. Ma'am. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. I've been letting everybody else talk. I'm going I'm I'm to go around. I'm going to finish going around the room, but I need you to put that at the top of the list. Uh -huh. You're going to you. know about this because everything you just said, you'll find it there. Yep. <laughs> yep. Oh, I've been out of the loop. Okay. So let me let me, let me go on. <laughs> Let's keep going. I do not want to mess your name. Tai Jain. Tai Jain. Tai Jain. Tai Jain. I don't know how to pronounce it. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. I'm sorry. I'm just getting home from class, so I'm trying to get settled in. I understand. Um, so, hi, my name is Tajane. Um, I actually make vegan cosmetics. So, um, back in 2019, I went through a transformation. I was really obese and everything like that, and I started eating vegan food. And I really, I really was um, intrigued, like with skincare and lip gloss, what's in it, and body care. So, I decided to make my own. 
So I currently have a business where I have vegan lip gloss, vegan lip scrubs, vegan body butter, and vegan lip balm. So if anyone's interested, <laughs> I'm the girl. I'm going to need you to push out everybody on this call to Quest for Texas. <laughs> yes, yes. Can you um, drop your, do you have a website? Yes, I do have a website. Can you drop that in the chat for me? Yes. Okay. And your like Instagram handle if you're on there. <laughs> yes, yes. I want to make sure we follow everybody. And did anyone tell you about the vegan family reunion? <laughs> No, that's what you're on here for, know, Naomi. You know, like, wait, I, I've never heard of a brand before. I, I, um, I, I, I'm gonna need all that information on the reunion because, yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna need all of that. But I'm gonna drop something in the chat that I need some of again everyone to do if you can. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Come on, copy for me. Is this is our supplier portal. There we go. Now I tell people when you register, doesn't mean you automatically in, but what it does is it puts you in our network. So when you apply for Quest and they go and look you up in our little portal, you're already there. So I just put that in the chat and yes, here are more. Oh yeah, I'm gonna eat good. <laughs> I'm gonna eat good. But I thank you, um, Tajane, and I, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your products because I'm, I'm like her. I went through a transformation, though. It was in 2021. I got really sick. This is why I ended up being gluten-free gluten -free and vegan because I got really, yes. really, really sick. And, um, I, and when I got over my illness, um, I tried to incorporate meat again, and my body was like, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. <laughs> I have to <laughs> So I understand that journey. And now I'm getting into everything in my life being gluten-free and, and being free. So I, I will be looking for your, um, your products. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being a part of this. I, this is just made. Thank you. all I'm, I'm, no, so, I'm so excited yeah. to be here. <laughs> yeah, I have no ideas. Uh, she gave it to me already. Okay. So we missing, um, Nadia, or, or who wants to go next? I think we got three people left. I'll go next. Okay. Okay, sorry, I have a shower hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not wearing a bra, so just full disclosure. <laughs> so um, I'm Nadia. Uh, my business name is Designer, and I'm from San Antonio, and I handcraft polymer clay jewelry. So... Um, the type of jewelry that I like to make is inspired by my culture. I love San Antonio and the spurs and the colors and just like fiesta. So my whole line is just very vibrant, very colorful um, jewelry that makes you want to dress up and feel pretty kind of deal. So that's what I like to specialize in. And um, I just wanted to show you guys a couple of them. So one of my biggest things are sugar schools. Looks like spurs colors. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> every um, I've only had my business since 2020, but um, one of my biggest lines has been the spurs, and those just sell like year round. And I don't see spurs jewelry like ever. So I think it'd be really cool to be able to go to. You're like picking up beer to go watch the game at home, and then you're like, oh, there's a pair of earrings on there, so you can wear them year round. Um, but also I love making boat earrings in different colors. Oh, wow. Those have been really fun, um, to make. I customize as well. So like the sugar schools, I was a vendor at the Muertos Fest, which is mm -hmm. the biggest day of the dead event mm -hmm. in San Antonio. And it was overwhelming in the best way possible. Um, I probably slept like two hours for the full you know, like three days that I was like there. So it was a great um, experience. So, you know, sugar schools of all styles, all colors. Um, and then for Fiesta, I'm preparing, you know, like the, the pinatas. Oh, the pinatas. So yeah. So I'm really excited about them. I'm working on different like variations and colors, big, um, big statements, but also like some smaller studs. Nice. And then, um, one of my favorite styles to customize is the Texas. 
So this is one of the, this looks like a pinata too. One of my leaders um, just lose his mind <laughs> if he saw those. He would be like, oh, okay, well, yeah, I, you're another one. I just love this whole, I just got to say this. Thank you. Y'all are amazing. Um, you're, first of all, is the, the type of products that you make. And secondly, how is it that we don't know about them? I'm, I'm upset at this point. <laughs> I've been behind the ball. Like, what, 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 what's going on? Yeah, Nadia, I need to. Yeah, we. I, I need Check to talk these to out. <gasps> Aren't those cool? Oh. <laughs> I know. I just so polymer clay. If you've never worn polymer clay before, it's super lightweight. Yep. Very, very oh, easy to maintain. So, like, you know, you just and I love to make pieces that you just wear year round. So. That's my goal. That's my mission. Um, and I don't think I've ever seen jewelry in, in HEB. So I know like at the beginning of the call, I was like, do I even belong here? But um, maybe I do. I don't know. I'll give it a shot. You showed me two things that I know would fly off the shelves, which are the San Antonio Spurs earrings, Fiesta, definitely. And then <laughs> the Texas ones. Yeah that yeah you there's your three items there's your yeah three. um I actually for the rodeo I made them um I do like a really pretty ombre that looks like a sunset those sell super super well in the Texas shape and then I make them with um I just recently had them for the rodeo and it was cow print Texas shaped earrings with sunflowers and those just like I, I, I don't even we gonna buy it. everything I don't even have any Texas, to show you we're <laughs> gonna buy anything Texas and the fact that um funny thing is is that we're setting up a pilot that is going to be and I'm saying this to where is she is she still on here yeah Maryland um home decor that's Texas and it's Texans for Texas in Texas decor so there you go. I'm saying uh, you two yeah it, there's there is space. What I love is the fact that there is what I'm hearing from everybody on this call. I don't see them in my stores. I don't see what you have. And that's your uniqueness. But I think sometimes what people do is they put all their products. They want every day. I got this, I got this, I got this, I got this. That's that honing in on that one, that one that's your best seller that everyone talks about it. Everyone knows that gets you in the door. That gets your sales up. That scales up your business. Even, and if they're smaller products, then three. Like I said, with hers, with earrings, th there's the three that she, you know, we talked about. With you, chef, there, I'm still on the collard green tomatoes. I mean, uh, tamales. I'm just, I'm, I'm ready. I'm still on that. And then I didn't know they had blow three pound cake cookies, man. I've been just, I, I passed by the pound cakes and I just smell because I can't eat them. <laughs> So, so I, and, and so I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm sorry. Yeah, I get excited when it comes to things that I don't see um, in the stores. I'm like, and, and I always run back to the source of leaders when I have these type of calls and they usually go, you had a call, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah, I got some people coming your way. Just get ready. Then everyone I send their way, they were like, Crystal, how did you find them? I'm like, they didn't, I didn't find them. They found me. And I'm glad they did. I'm so glad you reached out. Sharon, I'm so glad you reached out. Thank you. And the last but not least, I think, now I think, Irvin Saul, do you want to speak? I know we've got Anna and we've got y'all. You two last. Yes. Yeah, so um, my name is Tia and I am the founder and owner of Urban Soul Market. And we specialize in um, veganizing comfort food and soul food. And so it's, for me, it's mind, body, spirit. I had an awakening as well in terms of food and just everything, a full-on awakening. <laughs> and so um, I don't know if you guys noticed my shirt that says Sage Crystals and Vegan Food. That is my own t-shirt um, that's incorporating every, everything, mind, body, spirit. And so my three top bestsellers, I would say, would have to be the mac and cheese. Everybody loves the baked macaroni and cheese. Um, the crab cakes would be something. I have vegan crab cakes. Um, I have learned to make them gluten-free. 
Um, they are 100% vegetables. I don't use any soy. I don't use, and they are delicious. Like people who haven't had crab cakes in forever have thanked me with tears, okay? And there's other people who have had crab cakes and actually prefer ours to the real ones, which is kind of weird to me. <laughs> I'm like, like, yes. yes. <laughs> um, and okay. so the third one that I'm kind of on the fence, the vegan, the soul sauce that I have, the urban soul sauce, it's something mm -hmm. that I have not yet seen in HEB, but I think would do really good just because there's no like creamy, spicy type of like dipping sauce that's vegan. Nope. So I actually applied like a year ago for it and I got turned down or whatever happened, but I had applied initially just for my soul sauce. Cause I was like, this would do well, Request. you know, you did quest. I didn't do quest. I applied directly like through the, ah. so, mm -hmm. and that's why I say sometimes this is why quest is so, I keep pushing quest because it is the, I call it the open portal. Because you go into the portal I just sent you guys to. It's, it, they got to sift through. They got to find you. If you know somebody, that you know somebody. Quest is where they got to look at your video. They, it, mm -hmm. they have to look at every video submission. And with every video submission, you're in front of, and it's a group for that particular area of the business. And that whatever whatever desk we call them desks. So whether it's salty snacks or if it's sauces or if it's vegan, and huge, what is happening within HEB is I know we like our own. We we, we don't like sourcing out our stuff. Either it's gonna come from Texas or we gonna make it. But the problem is, is finding good vegan food. Y'all know this. It is vegan food yes. and gluten free. Oh, this has been a choice. Yeah. So. You all have a niche right now that's not being scratched in Texas. Everybody is sourcing it out. You know, we like Texans for Texans. So mm -hmm. I need all of these. And we got one more to go. I need, you know, I really, I can't emphasize it enough. <laughs> from vegan to vegan. <laughs> from yes. gluten free. Oh, you about to live your whole life at that reunion. I'm trying to tell you. you oh, didn't I, even could. I don't I don't already I don't already look at what why I'm, I was listening to you, but I was pulling <laughs> it up. Because I'm about to come through there like gangbusters. <laughs> oh, yeah. okay. crab cakes. I'm like, I'm glad you because I was making the list of the emails or the stuff that I needed to email you and that was on it. But since you already I'll remind you, I'll still put that. Please send it to me because yeah, that that right that, that right there. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna bring a few people with me. Anytime I go to expos or or different things that are specific to food. I bring a few leaders, source of leaders and mediums with me because they don't, as much as they're in this space, they leave work and they'd be like, I don't want to, I'm, no, no. Or they wait for these big spaces. So I'm the one that goes, hey, come with me today. And usually when they come with me, they'd be like, I had no idea, Crystal. Oh my God. Oh my God, Crystal. So I, yeah, I have a few folks with me because they're coming with me also to the expo. They didn't even know what was going on. Just like they don't know this. I'm, I'm going to share this with the sourcing leaders in BDM. So get ready. Bring your A game because I'm bringing them with me. And I'm going to let, and if you, if you apply for Quest, tell them, yeah, I applied for Quest. <laughs> so I'm just, I'm giving y'all some ends. I'm giving you, giving you some ends. Um, I think and Anna and then Tamara showed up. Tara, Tamara, Tamara. Yes, I'm here. Okay, I, I got Amy. Away. I apologize. And then I have you. And then we're and then we're gonna we I could be on this call. <laughs> <laughs> oh. and, uh, Anna, and then we'll come to you. Uh, where's she go? There you are. Okay, everybody keeps moving. It's like. <laughs> The Brady Bunch Shuffle. <laughs> Go ahead, Anna. Hi, my name is Anna Sines. Um, I don't know if this actually pertains to the stuff that I sell, but I'm actually an elementary art teacher and um, could never find anything for art teachers. And so I make stickers for teacher planners and um, to help people like me with art, music, PE. And so I make these, um, you 
know, cute little stickers just to help stay on track and jean day. In fact, today was sports day. I'm wearing a Spurs shirt and I had to put like, it's jean day, wear your sports shirt because um, we get all excited when it's a jean day. But um, it's just to help teachers stay organized, keep their planner, um, you know, keep it. They have a busy planner and sometimes they just get lost with uh, all the written notes that they have. And so at least a little because being an art teacher and having that vibrant color and all that, it kind of just brings it out and helps them. But another thing I do sell too is I'm from San Antonio and I do cute like little San Antonio Fiesta stickers. So again, I don't know if this really pertains to y'all, but it's just you know, just something like really cute and colorful. Ooh. But um, people like stickers for like their tumblers and like their laptop covers and then just like a little Fiesta Halo. Fiesta Halo, yeah. So, yeah, so, so <laughs> things, things like that. And, and so that's, I just started the business because my passion was to be an art teacher since I was 12 and just not being able to find anything for art teachers, it was really bothering me. So I took the initiative to help others, help myself, but also help my my fellow art teachers. And yeah. Well, actually we do have a place for you. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> um, there's, we have, again, HB, everybody thinks stores. Mm -hmm. And we are so big in this area. So we have something called Excellence in Education, where we work, with all school districts across Texas. Okay. And I have a very happy, friendly colleague I work with who works specifically with Buddy League and Be a Bully, Bully Not a Bully. Be a, bu be a Buddy Not a Bully. I can't ever say Yes, that. yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, um, but she loves this. She She's always looking for suppliers. And, and again, you are a small business. We're always looking to do business with small business. So. I have your, I'll get your information from Charmin and I will pass that on. Her name is Christy, uh, uh, Christine, I was going to call her Christine, Cynthia. <laughs> That's been a long day. I will pass that on to her because she's always, always looking for it. And you're right here in San Antonio. So yeah, yeah, we got plenty of space for you. <laughs> we got plenty of space for you, especially the tumblers. I, the I, I need to let, yeah, because got mine right here and I'm always buying them so uh, but the stickers definitely because she's always matter of fact we had an author that had a bunch of stickers and she she purchased them from the author and she distributed them throughout the schools so yes that's why so I was like there's always space there's always space and Tamara last but not least I finally got my tongue right Tamara last but not least <laughs> yes, thank you. I'm so sorry. Like I came in a little bit late, but I'm glad I can still come in and like talk to everyone. Um, so my name is Tamara. I'm basically from San Antonio. Um, I'm a lesson. Uh, I'm a licensed esthetician. So I basically do uh, facials, lashes, waxing. Um, but I also have a plant-based vegan formulated skincare line. It's called Honey Dip Cosmetics. I started it in 2017. Um, and I basically have like a, a wide range of products. So I have cleansers, moisturizers. Um, I've, I have a facial serum, some body products, some lip products, some hair products. But um, yeah, I just opened up a skin bar down here in the uh, airport area in San Antonio. Um, last October so I've only had it open for a little bit but I mean I'm taking it one day at a time it's really really fun I love what I do um and basically like skincare and services are like my niche like that's my subject of work um, it sounds like I have one two three that I should be seeing in the beauty space <laughs> for people like me um and um I never look at I always tell people never look at opportunities as competition you all have your own space you all have your own niches you all bring to the table yourselves which is what makes it special right so as I'm hearing all of this it's I'm blown away like how did we not know about you? But I know my, 
I know my friend Jody, and I won't say who he is, is going to be one happy. He was like, Christy, you always in the middle of something, but I'm happy you are. Because this space right here that we're talking about is something that we've been talking about in our meetings, that there's the lack there of it. Vegan, gluten-free opportunities for whether it's food, whether it's, it's, it's skin care. This space is so needed but we like to keep it Texas because we know with Texas, we like flavor. So <laughs> we, we like our food to have flavor. <laughs> we like our stuff to have flavor. So I, I'm, I'm excited. I, I'm, 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 thank you for inviting me to this forum. Thank you for inviting me to the wonderful people on this call. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I will be thank peeking. You. I will be peeking. I will be peeking. I'm going to put something else in the chat for y'all. That's why I've been trying to find stuff here to make it easy for you for the informational meetings that we were talking about. Mm -hmm. Let me get, there it is. And I'll make sure I stick that link in the email that I send out to everybody that was here too, along with the recording. Yep. Make sure um, they get that, the informational meetings as well. That's how you'll register for the first meeting. If you can't make that one, because they won't open the page. So if you go to Quest now, it's just gonna probably say, come back. Um, but these are the informational meetings that will give you, and it's virtually, which is great. So if you're at school or you're at work, it's an hour, maybe an hour, not even that long, put your earbud in and, 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 and work and go with us. Um, there it is, my links. And here is the one for the third meeting. There's only two left before we, but we will open up Quest on the 23rd. So next week, the link opens up. Um, but I would suggest that you go to these informational meetings. It's gonna, we're gonna take you on the 23rd, you're gonna see me present for Quest. So you, the, the snippets that you saw were parts of it, but we're gonna take you step-by-step step of what that application process looks like. So, I would say and suggest that time you carve out for one of those two meetings where you can attend and really understand this process because the better you understand it, the better it is in your space that the sourcing lead, it transfers over in your application. Secondly, take your time on your videos. They don't have to look like Lamar's, but trust me, and we don't want them to look like we're like if he, they can produce that they will, they will, they will. <laughs> but what we do want to see is you we want to see we want to be able to see the personality behind the product because that's what actually sells as you saw with the the number of I see you chef the number every time I always use the Afia foods because it, it's just one thing it, it talks of her story you notice she talked about her story more than she talked about her product, right? Mm -hmm. Well, because it's her story, people are interested in the product. Make sense? It draws them to the store. And once they get in the her product's phenomenal, it really is. But if I had never seen anything like that, if, if it just to say, I'm just cruising through and I see this commercial, I'm like, ooh, I've got to try that product. Because I just want to try it because of her. People need to understand and, and suppliers, suppliers, entrepreneurs under, need to understand this and always remember this. And I've got the two hands. Always remember this. You started it behind a need for yourself, right? You started it because either someone asked you to or you tried something on a fluke. Like you said, chef, it was like, ah, let me just try this. You know, I had leftovers. Let me just try this. Somebody out there is going, I wish I could find it. I always keep that in, in your mind. Chef, you had a question? Yes, I had, um, last night I had registered for the uh, the first one that was on, on the 23rd. Do I need to, do I need to attend both meetings or is it going to be like the same meeting? So you, the 20, you read, okay, so with the 23rd, we haven't had yet. No, I know, I know, I just read, I just no, read. No, you're fine, you're fine. Okay. You, so you're just fine. that one meeting. It's going to say that we're going to say the same thing in both meetings, but I just okay. want to make sure everybody has the same. And Naomi? Uh, 
I, I just really wanted to tell y'all about the vegan family reunion, but I could wait till the end. <laughs> I'm done. Like I'm, I'm ready. I'm, I'm, I, 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 if Charmin, if you don't have anything left for me, I'm, I'm ready to hear about the reunion. Huh? Yeah, we let's hear about it. I just want to make sure everybody gets their um, websites Question. and social media handles in the chat if you haven't already, especially if we're not like already following you or connected to you. Like Amy, we, you're good, but a few of you, I just want to make sure you're in there. I, yeah, I have one quick, quick question. When he asked me for my uh, information, when I stated my information on my website, it, uh, I didn't see my information uh, popped up. Uh, the cookie lady. Can, so can I, you, I got it. You got it? Okay, oh, I was so like. I got it. <laughs> I made sure I got that one. That was yeah, what I yeah. wanted to see. Yes, ma'am, the cookie lady 54com I got yes, it. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry to interrupt. Oh, you're okay? Yes. Take it away, Naomi. <laughs> hey, so um, first I want to say hi, Tamara. Um, I think you actually applied for the vegan family reunion because I recognize the name. Um, but and I did see that you're following the page, so hi. I don't know if um hi. <laughs> uh, and then there was another vegan brand on here that I that I was excited. Yeah, hi, hi, hi. <laughs> okay. So I'll tell you about the vegan family reunion. It, this is our second annual. Okay. The first annual vegan family reunion uh, was last year. And the mission, well, first I'll say, Charmaine's on the committee. So, hey, she's a uh, part of the crew. And then we have a cousin, Tia from Urban yeah. Soul, is all the <laughs> member from last year. And she, of course, is part of our family again this year. Uh, last year was such a major success and it was really just trying to find the vegan community and bringing the vegan community together. Um, and our mission behind the Vegan Family Reunion is to, um, we are first and foremost really trying to bring joy to the community. It's a community event that is just going to be <laughs> so much joy. I, I know it sounds crazy, but I describe it as the way that last year felt it felt like we were a pot of gold and there was like a rainbow shooting out up from the from the event. Like that's just how much love, anybody that was there can tell you. <laughs> like that's how much. So we have, um, we bring together black owned businesses from all over the state and even some people from outside the state and they're all vegan or vegan friendly businesses. So it's a pop-up market and charity event all or organized around poor, uh, fundraising to pour money into the black community in a variety of ways. One of those is to support the black owned businesses. So all of the vendors um, apply to come set up at the event and it's free of charge for the vendors as a way to support them and their businesses and offer them the additional profits, um, the connections and the exposure that the event provides. And then we uh, hire a bunch of local, local. Some, some are actually coming a little farther this year. Uh, black artists to participate in the event to really make it like just amazing. So we hire black photographer, black. We have painters painting live um, at the event. We have a DJ and MC. Um, we hired a black owned event planning company to help us decorate some stuff. We hired a, a woman that has a toddler play area. It's like soft mats with all kinds of stuff. And the event is gonna be super duper kid friendly and very inclusive to all a whole lot of different types of folks. Um, so then we do, we're, we're dumping money into the black owned businesses. We're dumping blood, money into the black artist community. And then we are fundraising for black focused charities. This year, the event is hosted at the San Antonio Food Bank. So we are raising money for the San Antonio Food Bank. And we, this is so exciting. Let me calm down. I get so excited and hype about this. Any of y'all familiar with Nurse Nikki, San Antonio nurse midwife? <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so San Antonio nurse midwife um, opened a birth and wellness center here in San Antonio. And it's the first one in San Antonio that is black owned. It's the third one that's black owned in all of Texas, but there's less than 10 or she is number 10 in the whole country for black owned wow. birth and wellness centers. And this is extremely important because the maternal mortality rate for black women 
is appalling. You know, uh, we are dying at three times the rate of um, three times the rate of Hispanic women and two and a half times the rate of white women. And study after study, it all came back to institutionalized racism. And they found that when black birthing people are being taken care of by black medical professionals, we're far more likely to be safe and have healthy babies and, and have a more empowering pregnancy delivery postpartum experience. So she opened this uh, birth center up with the goal of trying to, you know, see a change in that because she was labor and delivery for 13 years in the traditional hospital setting. And she started a black birth fund and she raises money and gives out partial or full scholarships to black birthing people that can't afford to have their babies at her birth and wellness center. And one of our other committee members, her name is Destiny. She has a four month old, beautiful little baby girl. Destiny and her baby were recipients of the birth fund. And now Destiny is on the committee helping to raise money to put back into the birth fund. Nice. And it's such a beautiful thing. We're super excited about um, our charity for this year. And we also are, um, we are also, um, gosh, there's so much. Oh yeah, okay, so we have so many inclusion efforts. So we have a, a, a room that's gonna be designated for expecting or new parents and it's being hosted by the San Antonio Black Doulas Collective. So they're actually gonna be setting up this amazing room to make all these expecting and new parents feel comfortable and they can come in and they can feed their babies and they'll be there, you know, offering them a water, talking about doula services, telling them about what they do, how they can help and, and just helping them relax in the room and be comfortable. Um, we are also gonna have a special needs sensory retreat for people of all ages of special needs. Um, I have a special needs son and there's a few other family members, black owned vegan businesses that also have special needs children. And so it's like kind of a, a passionate topic amongst our crew, our family. And so we're very, very excited and it's going to have um, professional educators or therapists in there helping give the caretakers a little break or working with the working with the people with special needs. We'll have all kinds of sensory needs stuff in there. We're also gonna have a sign language interpreter. Um, the dance floor is gonna be popping because it's gonna be family reunion music. What you would expect at our family reunions, at our weddings. So you know it's gonna be popping, you know it's gonna be dancing nonstop. We're gonna have the card table set up and we're gonna have space, dominoes, <laughs> checkers, chess. We have, um, I, I mean, I could keep going. Oh, the, a community art project that everyone at the event gets to work on and build our, our family tree together. So we're gonna see our tree come to life throughout the course of the event. It's the recite, the city of San Antonio is involved because the whole event is gonna be sustainable. Y'all don't get me started. I love her. We have, a company, <laughs> we, have a company called, we have a company called the Compost Queens coming out about the compost queens to help us keep this event as zero waste as possible so we have the compost queens coming out to set up and then we have the city of san antonio's recycling reworks department um coming to set up like the recycling thing and then we have a black owned community garden that's coming to talk about and all three of them are going to work together with all the event attendees um on let's let's compost as much as we can first then we're going to recycle and then we're going to put whatever's left in the trash and we're gonna measure how much waste we save from going to the landfill. And that's gonna be our benchmark for each year going forward to try to beat. How are we like, how are we gonna be more sustainable? So from my end, as we're doing all the planning, I'm, I'm you know, asking vendors, what is your packaging? And are you willing to use compostable packaging? And um, because I really wanna see how low we can go. I wanna, I wanna see just like maybe two little trash cans at the end of this event. Um, and, and I mean, it's just gonna be, it's just a beautiful gathering of so many different organizations and businesses and coming together to make this like a success. And it's, the food is off the chain, Crystal. Oh, I, I just blasted this out to my, my community at HEB. That's why I looked, yeah, I, I don't wait. I, I, yeah, I, I was, that's why I looked a little distracted. I just sent an email out to everybody about the family reunion. So I, I, I don't wait. <laughs> you're killing me too, because you're like, oh, we're, we're looking for gluten-free and we're looking for vegan. And my menu has four items that are all vegan and gluten-free. 
frozen part told of this whole team two years ago i'm not playing with y'all y'all mm. <laughs> and 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 the sourcing leaders and managers are like chris you ain't playing it covid didn't stop me it just gave me more time to go find folks virtually i it ain't been, uh, it just i learned how to pivot and keep it moving <laughs> so now it's one of those i, I while while y'all was talking i'm Okay. So as soon as they get to work in the morning, if, I say, then if you heard my, my phone's pinging, they getting emails like they just sent me at 7.30. This is what I'm doing at 7.30. <laughs> can you tell me one more thing for me? Can you tell me one more thing for me? This whole event, typically events like this run on vendor fees, paying their vendor fees, and that's what the money you use to host this event. So because I didn't want to ask nothing of the Black-owned businesses to become and be a part of this, I'm not charging any vendor fees. So we are looking for sponsors, Crystal. <laughs> because we have some fees left to pay, and I don't want to tell you. And all, all, this I, all I need is a packet. Can, can, you, can you send me a packet? I just, just need a packet. I got you. <laughs> I got you. Look, Charmaine had no email. I know, I know your email was hard to find, but she's yeah, got it. She's I got it. it. She's gonna <laughs> send you. I'm, I'm adding it to the list. Yes, I have to. I have to. I have to keep it covered because y'all don't understand this bad boy oh. rings. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know how people find me. <laughs> I really don't. I'm like, how did you get my actual number? How you find my email? Like, well, we dig and we did this and we did this and no, they get to call in like our operator and. Well, who is such a such a such a such? Well, can you give me their number? I'm a supplier, and I'm like, no, you're not. You just <laughs> like you know what? I can't be mad at you for your hustle. I, I that's the persistence I'm looking for. If you gonna dig look, that far, I need to yeah. listen to you. I'm a I'm a researcher in real life, so this is what I do. I dig and I dig and I dig, and I'm like, I gotta find somebody. <laughs> it's part of the grind. I keep telling you, I, I, I'm 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 an entrepreneur first, but I happen to work for a somebody, but my heart, my soul, my spirit will always be in entrepreneurship. And it, the grind never stops. I tell everyone the grind never stops. I'm grinding in my sleep. I'm, I wake up and it's, it's, I move that I have to keep my, my team members laugh at me because I keep a notebook by my bed. I keep a notebook right by my bed. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, it's a notebook and a pen. And I'm like, and then I go right back to sleep. <laughs> it's just, my brain constantly moves and in hearing all of this and, and just the conversations I've had over the last three weeks, it's all been around this space. It's all been around this space. A lot of people have pivoted since they've been home with COVID. A lot of people that got COVID now are becoming into this space. And then those of us who became ill in other ways are in this space. And then those that just want to feel better about life and more and want to have, to me, it's a better space for sustainability for us as a planet. The more we eat better, the better our planet is, the more we utilize those things that are good in the planet, the better our planet is. So again, I, this space, and then you talk about sustainability. Well, we are, I don't even know this either. We actually have a whole division that's dedicated to environmental, whole division. And I can't wait to introduce this group, a few of you. That, trust me, I sent it to him too, because when you talked about composting and sustainability and waste, yeah, I sent it to them too. So everybody who is a part of my network within HEB, I blasted this reunion out too. So you, yeah, we may become a full force and ready to eat and look at how you're doing things. Um, because again, this space is something that people are not really paying attention to. I think that they are, but they well, are. Right? I say they're not paying attention to it. And the reason why I say they're not paying attention to it, they're paying attention to it from a trend wise. Okay. What we're paying attention to is from a food wise. We're looking at it for like, okay, we don't want to hit the trends. What we want to hit is good food. People can always talk about, oh yeah, I'm vegan. Oh, I can, you know, I make this blue. Now nah, I make this vegan. Oh, I make this gluten free. And then you taste it, and it's just like paper, like a paper bag. Like, what, what, what did you just give me? Like, <laughs> what is this? It has no flavor. It has no taste. It has no nothing. What, what is this? I'm like, I, I, I came from soul food. I, I'm in this space for a reason, but I need to be able to get my soul food on. So. This is, that's why I said these unique products that I've heard uh, on this call, I have not seen anywhere. 
empty, empty wear. Like I, I'm blown away. I, I really am. I, I'm, I'm again. I'm, I'm gonna be up with my notepad tonight. So I mean, thank you very much. I'm, I'll be up writing, like, um, because I really want to bring y'all into the space that I. If <laughs> let's just say I have someone on my side, he always says, "Krista, you bring us the best of the best. You always bring us something we don't know about." And I always say, I just bring you to the table. I, I, I'm pretty sure you're going to eat. So um, here's the table. And usually when they come to the table, they eat. So I'm bringing them to the family reunion and, and from all aspects. So if everybody on this call, please be on there and I'll be in touch with you. I'll get your information and put you in touch with EIE because, yeah, we want those stickers. Everybody on this call has a piece of the pie. I'm just saying that everybody on this call, just continue doing what you're doing, continue networking. I love the close network that you have. Um, you don't see, you see people in this space, but you don't see a network like this. You do not. And it's unique, it's special, keep supporting each other. And you, hey, you got, you got a champion over here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be over here fighting for you. I'll be fighting for you and with you. Uh, I'll keep you abreast of everything that we're doing on the HEB side. You have an in. She knows she can reach me out at any time. I, you, are the, you, you got a star by the name, so you get at the top of the email list. Um, because I, I, I really want to make sure, I really want to see y'all on, on the shelves. I really want to see you, in, as we say, in my HEB. I want to see y'all on the shelves. It's just too many unique products out here just on this call that I don't see. I don't see it all. So I'm looking forward to, uh, yeah, I'm coming on an empty stomach. I'll be there at noon. Matter of fact, I'll be there at, 12, at 1130. I'll be at the gate. Like, <laughs> I, want it fresh. I love it. I'll be the one that have two things in my hand. And I'll be like, you don't talk to me for about an hour. Let me get you seen. And then, <laughs> and then I'm going to go walk it off and go eat some more. So, and then I'm going to go shop. Dance it off. <laughs> and, and the funniest thing is you're doing it at the food bank and that's where we the last place we hosted the finals for it, quest for texas fest so mm -hmm. i always say nothing happened for my sake mm -hmm. no. again sharma thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you for inviting me thank um, you <laughs> <laughs> i'm like i'll, I'll let y'all know our little our board we had our our board meeting and so we have like goals for the year and one of our goals we said we're like okay we want to see want somebody in our, our community in HEB by the end of the year, at least on their way. So this was step one. <laughs> Here, and I'm ready to work. So let's go. I got, that's, that's been my model for 2022. Let's go. Let's get it. I'm from, I got, again, I'm from Houston. So yeah, I, I can be a little, <laughs> I'm a little aged now. <laughs> Just, let's go. Let's get it. Let, let's do this. Cause I don't see why I can't foresee anything why I won't find you on my shelves, all of you. I, I think I told you that till when I met you. I said I'm not I, I'm not finished with you, and then you pop up on the call. We we lose each other. So there we always say there's no mistakes and there's no coincidences. There's a no reason for this. So and and a few of you I've already met before. So there's a reason why this is happening, and I am happy. <laughs> yeah, I have no idea right now. I, I, right now, how I'm feeling. This, this is the part of my job that I absolutely love. I, I love, 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 love to see all these beautiful faces, to see all these spaces, the people, the people in these spaces, and you live in it, and you, you living in it. Yeah, keep, keep doing that, and you know what they say: what you project out comes back. So, keep that shine going. Keep that, that, that going. In, in, in hone in on your craft, master it, master it, master it, master it. And trust me, it's going to come your way. And I, like I said, I just, I have a strange feeling. I'm going to see a few of y'all at the finals. I'm just, I'll be there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready. I'm, I'm ready. I'm back in the room grinning like this. I will talk to y'all soon. Let me get off this because I, I have an 8 a.m. call. Why do they do 8 a.m. calls on, on Fridays? I do not know. But my camera will probably be off. So <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you, I, I take that. I'll say this and I'll, I'm going to jump off. Y'all be well, be safe, and, and be the best that you are because you are the best. I'm just going to say that. 
I'll see y'all later. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Good night.